Hello Year 9, uh, welcome to uh, my options presentation about GCSE Music. Bizarrely, uh, not, you're used to seeing me with my Head of Year hat on. Uh, today I've got my Head of Music hat on and I want to talk you through uh, some of the key information about GCSE Music at St Benedict's. So, uh, what's great about GCSE Music? It's a really, really tricky question, this one for me, uh, because obviously being a music teacher, uh, there's so many things I believe that are great about GCSE Music, but I've kind of narrowed it down to three main areas. The first um, is that music is a universal language. It's a common shared experience amongst everybody. You know, everybody listens to music. Everybody has some involvement with music. Uh, there's such a wide variety of music that we study as part of the GCSE course. Um, it makes it a really, really interesting and, and appealing uh, option. The second thing is that um, I think some of you might be looking at that picture and going, my goodness, I don't think I could I could ever understand what that means. Um, it, it's a tricky subject, but there are so many kind of skills and, and knowledge that you pick up throughout the course of the two years, which means that, you know, throughout the course, you will start to look at that and go, oh, I understand what that means. I understand what that means. So stuff that perhaps seems quite intimidating and daunting now is broken down uh, and taught to you over the course of the two years so that you're really comfortable with seeing something like that um, uh, by the end of the course. The final thing uh, and the thing that I perhaps like most about GCSE Music is it gives everybody the opportunity to be good at something, um, whether to be a good performer, a good composer, um, a good kind of listener uh, to a piece of music. There's so many kind of different strands to the course that everybody has uh, an opportunity to shine. I think such an important question in your mind will be what careers might this open up for me? What future study options might this open up for me? Uh, so I've got a couple of illustrations and, and ideas about that that I'd like to share with you now. Um, looking at this picture, first of all, you might think, well, you know, the obvious careers in here, uh, a performer, a conductor, a composer, somebody who writes the music. But there's actually so many around that that I'd like to share with you now. The first one I've got is a sound designer. So looking at the architecture, the engineering of the space in which people are performing and designing that um, experience. Tying in with that you've got an acoustic engineer, somebody who might be a bit more involved in in kind of working with live sound and acoustic uh, instruments rather than electronic instruments. You've got a conductor, somebody who kind of leads an ensemble, leads an orchestra, leads a, a choir, a group of musicians. You've obviously got the performers who are involved uh, in the performance itself. You've got an orchestra manager, somebody who takes on the day to day kind of running the logistics, the kind of event planning, the, the management of the of the individuals who who make up that performance. Uh, and finally, in this picture, you've got the venue manager, somebody who isn't necessarily a, a musician, but has a background in music and manages the, the kind of artists and the performers that come and perform at that particular place. So quite a different picture this time. You know, the first picture was a little bit more uh, traditional. Uh, you've obviously got kind of classical musicians in there. This one totally contrasting, an outdoor venue. So what kind of job roles might you expect to find here? Uh, the first one I've got there for you is sound engineer. People who go to a festival, you know, you might have adver adverse weather conditions. You might have, you know, lots of wind, lots of rain. Um, people will still expect a high quality kind of auditory experience. Um, so a sound engineer will design uh, the kind of experience for the, for the audience with all of that in mind. You've got an audio visual designer, lots of, lots of um, kind of contemporary performing artists rely on lots of graphics, lots of visuals, uh, the kind of design of that and an understanding of music in the design of that is really, really important. Uh, you might have PR, public relations for the performance for the artists that are, are there, okay? Uh, you might also have a performer, and I've put that on there again because there's such a different, you're such a contrast in, in those two uh, types of performer and the kind of music they perform. I thought it was worth reminding you kind of just how broad that spectrum is. A lighting designer, you know, um, lots of kind of shows of this nature are, are just as much about the spectacle of the performance as well as, you know, the quality of the music there as well. So a uh, lighting designer and again, an understanding of music and, and how that works and how that ties in with what you'd like to do with lights is important. Uh, and the final one there is event planner, somebody who kind of puts all of this together, uh, somebody who plans festivals, uh, for example. So the first two slides very much focused on the performance side of the subject, uh, but there are so many other career choices uh, open to you. The first one, you know, teacher, lecturer or an academic. Uh, you've then got, you know, music therapist, people who work with um, people with various conditions and use music to, to help 
improve their quality of life. Uh, you've got a producer, somebody who kind of has the, the kind of vision and the ideas and often the financial input for people who want to record music, uh, radio DJ or broadcaster, composer, uh, or indeed a journalist. And and the kind of future study options, obviously we can talk, we could talk about university, we could talk about uh, different qualifications. The main thing that will unlock those next things for you would be going on to study uh, AS or A-level music, or indeed uh, an equivalent BTEC qualification. So what's actually involved in the GCSE music course then? Uh, there are three components to the course. You've got component one, which is performing, component two, which is composing, and component three, which is appraising or listening, okay? With the performance side of the course, um, I can already see that people will be going, oh, I don't play an instrument. Uh, that's not a problem. Um, you have some basic keyboard skills from your stuff at Key Stage 3. You can always sing, and it's not too late to pick up an instrument and start learning. However, that would take a great deal of commitment. I mean, I'd fully support you in that, uh, but it would take a lot of commitment from, from your side, okay? Uh, the composing, you do two compositions individually. There's no group composition, is there? has been in, in Key Stage 3, uh, but you do one in response to a brief or a task set by the exam board, and there are four of those to choose from each year, and then one free composition, so in any style that you want to write in, that's totally up to you. Uh, for the kind of appraising side of the exams, the, the listening side, uh, we study a wide variety of music under those areas of study there. We've got uh, musical forms and devices, including a set work, music for ensemble, film music and popular music, which also includes a set work. What you'll notice here as well is that the performing and composing make up 60% of the course and actually 60% of the course is still coursework. So if you're somebody who doesn't particularly enjoy a, a kind of their qualification being determined by one big exam at the end and would prefer to kind of work on it bit by bit as we go through the course, uh, then music's definitely an option for you to consider. Don't worry, I'm not going to read all of these ones out to you, but there's one I want to draw out in particular, uh, which is the kind of larger speech bubble in the middle of the page. Uh, previous year 11 student said, in my college interviews and applications, I've realised how lucky I am to have something like music on my CV, rather than just the same subjects that everyone else has studied. It makes me stand out from the crowd in interviews, which is great because the courses I want to do are really oversubscribed. I think that's a really important thing to say is that actually, you know, there, there aren't many people that study GCSE music kind of locally, nationally, and it is something that will really make you stand out. Uh, pause the video here so you can read the others. So a final thought then. Um, I first came across this quote when I was studying music at GCSE level and uh, it it hit me pretty hard, if I'm honest, um, thinking about a, a life and an existence without music. You know, uh, I'm a music teacher. It, it's kind of my my bread and butter, my kind of day to day. I, I just wouldn't be without it. And I think we can all, whether we're kind of interested in music to that extent or not, agree that without music, life would certainly be uh, really, really different. So, you know, GCSE music is certainly one to consider. Uh, like I say, whether you're interested in a, a career longer term in, in the subject or just to kind of add a real kind of uh, breadth uh, to your uh, range of subjects, okay? If you need any more information or if you've got any more questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, my email is just there. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all soon, Year 9. Take care. Bye-bye.